up here we've got an example of how you can introduce an argument you can see it's got that keyword in there I've circled consequence um, and we've got a very fancy word it's got an exclamation mark it says ubiquitous now some of you won't know what ubiquitous means and it doesn't necessarily matter what matters is if you see a word like that in an introduction the examiner is going to go oh this is a clever student and so it's a great technique to get in there especially for those who get the higher marks this person is somebody who reads a lot and that's what gives them that vocabulary and so I'd highly recommend if you want to get those top marks seven eight nines see me for some books you might be able to read to help you to get there Another great way to introduce it is seen here how this person shows all of the things that they're going to write about in their in their essay without saying I am going to write about it's still argued and um, but there is also a really good point underneath that's slightly chopped off because I was a fool with my camera but this person says um, the appointment of Lanfranc uh, well the Normans increased the power of the Archbishop of Canterbury to become the most powerful position in the church so that then when Stigand is replaced and Lanfranc who actually instigates this Archbishop of Canterbury being the most powerful position automatically that gives the Normans more power because they've got a Norman in this incredibly powerful position that's a really clever analytical point I wanted to share with you some great analysis here and um, because this person says um, William's control over the church by appointing Lanfranc also had a physical impact. It's a clever way of thinking about it. They're not spelled physical, right? And I'm sure they'll correct that um, by saying uh, there was the building of the churches in the Norman style and also there were church services held in Latin. So it was another reminder that the Normans were in control. Um, and then the one thing that I really like with the three ticks there, they've, they've tied it back to this meant that. So they've used that connective to explain themselves. This meant that the rebellious Saxons knew the Normans were are here to stay and that God was on their side. It really explains it. Better if it mentioned consequence somewhere in there, but brilliant analysis. Look at this for another wonderful bit of analysis. Um, arguing that uh, the fact that simony and nepotism and stuff had been ruled out of the church was important, but says at the end it can't be the most important consequence of Lanfranc's appointment because um, it only affected those people who were churchmen. Better if they'd used clergymen, that's the key word there. Clergymen is, is people who work in the church um, and not the whole population, like some of the other, like the norm, increased Norman control of the church generally. So, great analytical point, and, and doing a bit of relative importance, which I'll make a point about now. Now, last year I went on, uh, quite a few of you, and some year 11s, about doing relative importance. And looking at the examiner's reports, it well, it's not as important as, as I thought. So, do it where it's appropriate. That last example is a great example of somebody arguing clever argument that this can't have been the biggest consequence um, for this reason but do not shoehorn it in only put it where you can think of a clever argument like that of how something's more important than another because you you might feel like you have to do it from what i was saying last year when i thought you might have now we've had examiner's reports we've poured through them you don't have to do it it's just a clever tool to have in your bag in the exam so don't try to do it don't force it just do it where you see something naturally. Here's a wonderful conclusion. Great way to do a conclusion. And this, the main consequence of the appointment of Lanfranc was an increase in Norman control of the church because of an influence on most of the population due to the importance of religion. And without control over the church, William could not have complete control over England. It's, it's kind of saying this was important because it affected pretty much everybody and then it affected other things later on, it had knock-on consequences. It's an example of what we're just saying. It's relative importance, and it's done really cleverly. It's not done for the sake of it. If you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure, don't do it. Just explain why your main reason is so important. But where you can, like here, this is where it's a good tool to have in the bag.
there's so much going on in this bit down here Uh, there's so many brilliant things and i want you to have a real good read of it looking at the things i've underlined what's more further proving this is shown to be the main consequence complete and utter we're seeing we're seeing connectives but clever ones using connecting the light it really flows through why they say complete and utter without this complete and utter control over the church that's great history because that's not just sort of wishy-washy saying they had control over the church it's being really argumentative and forceful that's what history is all about having a good argument and you can see the highlighted words showing that they're really focused on consequences and control of the normans it's argued it's focused it uses connectives and it's got some really clever points the really clever point it's it's making when you come to read it is similar to one we've already read without the complete and utter control over the church from the appointment of Lanfranc you then couldn't have had the influence the church had over Norman control over England generally now we're going to run it back a little bit because this is good it's not as good as what this person does in the next bit but it's, it's decent because the person there's two sentences here doesn't really make a paragraph but it's, it really shows it's good for students who maybe want to make that leap from grade 3, 4 to 5, 6. Because they make a point and they use this method to explain it. Um, another was, another consequence, is that Lanfranc banned several things in relation to how Stigand had run the church. He banned such things as simony and nepotism. This meant that Lanfranc and William had control over the appointment of religious positions. Now they could have gone a bit further and said why this was such an important consequence. But there is a point using knowledge and there is a, a bit of explanation as to why that was important um, and you need to be using this meant that those connectives are so important now this one is the same person but they've gone for it and hopefully you can see the difference this is more like those five sixes going to sevens and eights however the main consequence was very much that it gave William more control over England as a whole that, that little sentence there is, as a whole is clever Due to Lanfranc being a loyal friend and servant to William, he now had another outlet for his power and another route to enforce his ideology. Clever historical terms. This is because, so I'm explaining here, the people who didn't follow the monarch um, with full devotion usually still obediently followed the church. However, this, the church, was now orchestrated, controlled with the king's help. Now again, they could have gone a bit further to get that sort of eight, nine, really get in there and say, so therefore, William had gained a tool that he could use to help him control England, and this was a huge consequence. Just that little step further. But yeah, hopefully you can see this is really good, really clever stuff. This is exactly how to use connectives effectively. So I forgot to underline these, silly me, but hopefully you can see. By appointing a Norman Archbishop, this meant that one. The not that's one connective. The Normans could keep control over England because two, as the Archbishop was the head of the church and almost everyone in the eleventh century was religious, this meant that three, the Archbishop would be obeyed without question. That's a bit overstated. Maybe the Archbishop would be questioned, but would usually be obeyed without question. Additionally, another connective, the normalisation of the church led to another one. The replacement of Anglo-Saxon bishops and priests with Normans, which meant, another one, the church would be in the power of the Normans. It really thoroughly explains why all of those things are important for the question. So somewhere in there, I hope there's some things which can really help you to understand what great history looks like. And you can always look back on this video, because it will always be there on my YouTube channel. And do stop, put your hand up, ask me things about your question uh, as you're going and working through this. Thank you very much. Hope it's useful. Do give me some feedback and let me know. It takes a while to make these and I want to know that they're worth it or not.